More than 10 years have passed since the launch of Diablo 3, so it's been an age since gamers have had the chance to dive into a brand new, full-sized Diablo experience. We know there are many players who are looking forward to jumping into Diablo for the first time. So, with our time spent playing the game, during the numerous betas and for review, we're here to help out any beginners who are just getting started in Diablo 4 with these 17 essential tips and tricks. They'll drag the whole damn world into their feud, unless we can stop it. The different world tiers in the game act like a difficulty system. World Tier 1 is recommended for new players, or those wanting a casual playthrough experience. Whereas World Tier 2 provides more challenging enemies that reward you with 20% more experience and 15% more gold. From our experience, World Tier 2 is the sweet spot, as 90% of the time it's not too difficult and the resource bonuses help the progression feel more rewarding. Some bosses can be tough to deal with if you're not playing in co-op, but you can change your world tier at the world tier statue in Kyovashad or from the main menu if you want to get past a particularly annoying foe. World tiers 3 and 4 are decidedly more difficult than the previous ones, but they can only be unlocked after you complete the main story and reach level 50 or higher. Consider these world tiers if you want to continue leveling up your characters after the campaign missions are all finished. Each class skill tree comes with multiple different options for you to unlock with each additional skill point, but you don't need to worry about decision paralysis. Try it all out. You can unlock a skill, give it a go, and then at any time you can refund that skill to choose a different option on the tree. This lets you sample all of the options so that you can make an informed decision on which core abilities you want to unlock first, without waiting to level up. You can refund skill points for free until you reach roughly level 10, and while the cost for refunding skill points increases with each point that you spend in the skill tree, the amount of gold required to refund a single skill is small enough that there's no need to feel locked into any one choice that you make. While you're slaying enemies, picking up equipment and comparing it to your current loadout, you can mark your salvage as junk when you know you're not going to be using it. That way, you can either dismantle or sell all of it in bulk when you return to a merchant or blacksmith without having to individually sell each and every piece. Speaking of selling equipment... Once your inventory is full, you won't be able to pick up any more. While you could spend some time throwing out your less valuable equipment to make room, we strongly suggest that you make liberal use of the Town Portal ability to immediately return to the nearest large city for free. Then you can dismantle, sell, upgrade and store all of your equipment, top up your health and then head back through the portal you came in through to go right back to where you were before. Now you can pick up everything that you left behind on the ground without missing out on any of that sweet gold. Dismantling equipment is good for receiving upgrade resources, but you may not know that you can also dismantle equipment to permanently unlock cosmetic transmogrification options. Try saying that 10 times fast. Dismantling an item with the pickaxe symbol above it will unlock a new cosmetic option that you can equip over items when using the character's wardrobe, meaning you can tailor your character's appearance independently to your gear. This also means that in order to have the impressive rare and legendary equipment styles as transmog options, you do need to dismantle them. But this will reward you with rare materials as well, so it's not an entirely superficial decision to make. Dungeons can be amazing places to explore, but once you defeat the boss in the deepest depths, trudging all the way back to the surface is a real bore. Sometimes you will be rewarded with a shortcut after the boss is defeated, but if not, you can always open up your map, find the entrance icon, signified by the small blue stairs, and click on it to instantly travel back to the outside world at the entrance of the dungeon. You can also do this by opening the radial menu and activating the stairs icon. Sometimes you can find yourself suddenly surrounded by rocks, or your character starts running away by themselves, and the game doesn't do a great job of explaining why this happens. Some elite enemies can spawn in with modifiers, like Fiery, Waller, or Terrifying. These different modifiers can appear on most enemy types, so when you see the small coloured symbol above their heads, you can start to recognise what each one is. 
You can also see the name of the modifier underneath their health bar at the top of the screen when you're fighting them. Use this info to stay informed of their abilities and stay in control. The small bar underneath a boss's health is a stun meter. You could fill up this bar with debuffs and elemental effects like frost or stun. Once it is full, the boss will become staggered for a short time, allowing you to get some free damage in. This is the time to unleash your strongest abilities, so burn them if you've got them. Also, it's worth mentioning that these red diamonds across the boss's health bar indicate when the boss will drop health potions for you. Use this info to inform just how aggressive you want to be in this boss fight. Make sure your health is full if your potions are at maximum. While you won't be able to pick up more potions if you're full up, you may be able to consume one to top up your life and then pick up the spare that you would have otherwise left behind, meaning it doesn't go to waste and you're back to full health. The potions won't always be there if you end up going back for them, so try to make sure you're at full health whenever you find some spares. As you reach certain level milestones, new health potion upgrades will be made available to you. Bring the required items and gold to an alchemist to upgrade your potion's potency, just like that. The game also shows you a notification with an up arrow over the top of the potion icon to let you know that you have an upgrade available to purchase. Speaking of potions, you can increase the amount of total potions that you can carry by increasing your level of renown in a given area, like the Fractured Peaks for example. Completing side quests, dungeons, strongholds and exploring the map all contribute to your renown level for a given area, and when you pass certain thresholds, you'll receive rewards like skill points, gold, or potion capacity upgrades. Some of these upgrades are also account-wide, meaning other characters that you start will immediately have these benefits as well. If you see this icon on the map or a trail of gold, chances are you're near a treasure goblin. Immediately make them your priority. They always drop heaps of gear upon defeat, as well as a bunch of gold. These little guys have a deceptively large amount of health, and they will keep running if you can't stun them with a spell or ability, meaning that they can run you into a big group of nasties if you're unlucky, but taking them out is almost always worth it in the long run. Each major region in Diablo 4 is home to several challenging strongholds that are essentially outdoor dungeons. You'll need to clear these large areas of demonic presence through multiple objectives and phases, and these can be tough to conquer as they'll usually be several levels higher than you. Clearing them is worth your while though, not only for the renown that you'll earn, but also because the area will literally transform as normal folk return to populate the place, turning it into a new town that you can stop at or teleport to. Certain strongholds also open up new dungeons that you couldn't access before, which always reward you with more legendary aspects for clearing them. Similar to Kadala in Diablo 3, Purveyors of Curiosities will give you randomized loot in exchange for a currency called Murmuring Obols. Obols can be acquired by completing public events out in the open world, or by completing randomized events that can appear in dungeons. Completing the mastery objectives for these events will reward you with more obols, and purveyors can even drop powerful unique weapons and gear as well. But keep in mind that you're rolling the dice every time you buy something from them. There's every chance that you'll buy a common piece of equipment instead of a legendary one. Oh, bad luck. <laughs> Try again. Purveyors also sell whispering keys, which you need to open the occasional silent chests that you can find while exploring. They're cheap to buy, so we recommend having a few on hand at any given time, but keep in mind that silent chests reward you with a randomized output too, so there's no guarantee you'll receive something amazing for opening one up, although there is always a chance. Equipping your character with legendary equipment can drastically change the way that your character plays, so it can be tempting to hold onto your legendaries even if you start getting high level equipment. Don't worry, you can keep improving your overall gear score while also keeping the same buff. At the Occultist, you can extract the legendary effects of a certain armor piece, which will place it in your aspect inventory. 
rare yellow gear can then be turned into legendary orange gear by fusing it with this extracted imprint or other earned aspects. We wouldn't recommend doing this every 5 minutes as it requires the use of some rare resources, but that option is there for you if you just have to keep a certain playstyle alive. With these tips in hand, you should be well armed to fight the evils of Sanctuary as you pursue the Daughter of Hatred, and we will have plenty of updates to our guide as we spend time with the full release, so be sure to check back in as you progress through the story. For more on Diablo 4, check out our full video review, or the first minutes of the game. And for everything else gaming, keep it here on IGN. Your kind are weak, and this world has been wasted on the crusades of the unworthy. I can stop her.